Finally, widgets can now be interactive, meaning that you can place buttons inside of your widgets and perform an action when they're pressed. And the widgets are even animated throughout the changes that uh, yeah, happen with this button press. So in today's video, I have already built such a widget and I will go over it just to show you how everything works and how you can implement it for your own widgets. So this is the example application that I have right here. And on the left hand side, I will show you the code and on the right hand side, the actual app in the simulator. So I write and read a value called count from app storage, which really is just the SwiftUI wraparound user defaults. And when I press this top button here, then I just increase the number. And when I press this bottom button here, I will reset it back to be 42. So how does this work? I actually implemented these two buttons in completely different ways. So the top one is just a regular button that increases our count value from app storage. And then also reloads all of our widget timelines just so everything uh, on the home screen is up to date. But the bottom button here, I uh, don't have any logic inside of there. Instead, I am using this new overload here where I can provide an app intent. And app intents are the magic ingredient to make your widgets be interactive. So just to set this particular widget up, I have created a app group for both the main app target and the widget extension. Both of them use the exact same app group. And then in my app declaration, I have added the default app storage modifier, which lets me use this app groups user default suite instead of the standard one, which is not synced with widget kit. I would have preferred to make this video about Swift data in interactive widgets, but I have tested this for countless hours and I just can't get Swift data to sync across app groups. This is probably a bug in Xcode 15 beta one. So you can check the pinned comment below this video if you're into Swift data for interactive widgets, because I will link a video there once it is fixed on my end and I can get a video up on the topic. But for now, we're using user defaults in an app group so we can get rid of that here. And then that is basically everything that we care about in our content view. It's very basic, just a button, an app storage value called count, and a button that calls the set count intent, passing the value 42 in this case. So let's now have a look at our widget extension and I folded everything up here so we can go through it one by one. So first of all, this is the widget definition. Very simple stuff. I'm just using a static configuration with my timeline provider that I will show you in a second and my widgets entry view, which is also just a dummy thing, um, which I will also have a look at in a second. And then also I totally forgot to show you the widget in action. So here it is right there um, on the home screen in the simulator and you can see the increase button works and the set to 42 button also works. So let's have a look at our timeline provider. This is almost exactly the same thing that you would usually have, but since I added a count integer to my simple entry, which got auto generated, I just added a single line of code here. I also created a get count function as part of my timeline provider that just takes the shared store from user defaults and returns its value. If for some reason it can't access the shared store, it will return minus one, which is a value that our widget usually cannot display. And then in all of these functions here, wherever I create a simple entry, I just appended the get count function here to get the count. Everything else is exactly the default setup just so you know where to get started. So lastly, let's have a look at our widgets entry view, which is the actual view displayed here inside of the system small widget. Also very simple stuff. I just have a text of our entry dot count with a format of numbers since it is an integer. And then I just have two buttons, one button to increase the value, one button to set it back to 42. First one uses the increase count intent, passing no parameters. Second one uses the set count intent, 
passing the value 42. We'll have a look at these intents next. But very important, if this is your first time working on iOS 17 widgets, but you have already worked with widgets in the past, there is now a new modifier that is required in order for you to build your widgets for iOS 17, which is the container background. And here you set your background that you want for the widget. So dot background is basically the default. Instead, we could also do some color here, but I will just go with dot background for simplicity's sake. So button calling an intent. How does that intent look? Well, as I told you, I created two, one simple example, which is the increase count intent, and then a, a bit more complicated example, but also really not that bad to understand, which is the set count intent. So these intents are just Swift structs coming from the app intents framework. And the struct just has to conform to the app intent protocol. In order to conform to that, you only need to implement two things. First of all, you need to implement a localized string resource called title being a static var. And this is basically just the name or the title of your intent as it might be displayed in shortcuts, Siri or whatever. So I just called it increase count. And then you need to implement this async throwing perform function, which returns some intent result. We don't even care about that intent result in this example right here. And then in here, the perform function is just the logic that you want to execute when this intent is being run. So in our case, the logic I want to execute when the increase button is pressed. So for that, I once again take the shared user default store. I get the current count and I increase it by one, saving it back into user defaults. And then I ju just return an empty result. If you're interested going into more detail about the app intents framework, please just leave a comment down below and I'll make a video about it as well. And then as well as the increase count intent, I also created the set count intent just to show you that you can also pass data into your intents. For that, you can create a variable. I called it value, which is just an int and then attach the add parameter property wrapper to it, giving this once again, a string value, so it can be used in other system features. Once you have added your own parameters, you will have to create an empty initializer and then probably a custom initializer to actually pass these values like we did in the widget right here. So we passed value 42. This is our custom initializer right here. Without doing that, you will not be able to pass values to the parameters. So you will definitely have to create your own custom in it. Shouldn't be too much of an issue though. And then in here, the perform function is very trivial. You can have a look at that yourself. The only other very important thing for your intent is, as you can see, mine is inside of the widgets group. It can be wherever you want in your project, but you have to make sure that it is a target member of both your main app, which is called group test in my case, and your widgets extension that is needed because you're actually using this type right here in a widget extension and right here in your main app and having a look at the simulator again i am able to increase my count set it back to 42 and when i open up the app i can also increase it right here and since i use that reload timeline function it will actually also re reload the widget and be updated live and we also have this little animation here, which you can customize using Swift UI transition and animation system. I absolutely love how this got implemented. And I actually believe that using intents for app logic might be a very nice architecture going forward, because that way you can expose basically anything in your app to shortcuts and Siri might be worth to think about that for your app to use this intent button initializer in some more places of your main app, not just in the widget.